The Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering laser vaginal rejuvenation. With us, we have an expert on the topic, board-certified gynecologist, Dr. Aguirre. Dr. Aguirre, welcome to the program. Thank you. Happy to be here. So before we get into today's topic, tell me a little bit about your practice. I mean, who's the typical patient? I know you do a lot of different procedures. You're known as a pelvic surgeon right. in, in Colorado. So, so I'm, a, I'm a fellowship trained urogynecologist. So uh, my, my, my practice is a surgical practice dealing with pelvic issues such as incontinence and prolapse. Um, but we also do... Are co- those mostly older Patients? Um, some of them are older, but, but okay. not all of them. I, I, some women come in with incontinence even in their 20s. Um, so my, 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 my typical patient is a broad range. Um, so, so women who come in with um, bladder issues, that can be younger women in their 20s and 30s, um, to moms who are in their 30s and 40s, to, to then grandmas who are 70 and 80-year-olds. Okay, now the cosmetic part of your practice, tell me about that. Yeah, so that's, that's been fascinating. I, I added that about five years ago. Um, and at first I thought it would be all very young, attractive women, but it's, it's all in between. It's, um, it's everyone. It's everyone. Um, even because the, 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 the women who are bothered by this, uh, they first notice it when, when they get into puberty. Tell me about the cosmetic part of your practice. What do you call it, by the way, that part of your practice? The cosmetic part? Yeah. The cosmetic gynecology. All right, all right. And, and um, it, go, it goes by, by several names, actually. It could be aesthetic vaginal surgery to female genital cosmetic surgery. And the, the, the problem with, with um, calling it cosmetic vaginal surgery, because it involves more than just the vagina, it could be the, the exterior part, so, so what women see. Okay. Um, but if we, if we say it's the, the cosmetic gynecology aspect of it, it can be anywhere from vaginal looseness to appearance. Um, and so the- So it's a tightening procedure yeah. and an aesthetic so, so, procedure. So, so the tightening procedure, um, many people have heard of the term laser vaginal rejuvenation. Okay. And, and that refers to the vaginal tightening. Um, but then there's also more cosmetic and aesthetic work that, that we do. So You call that labiaplasty? Yeah. Is that right? And so that, that would be the labiaplasty. But, but it's, it's more than just the labia reduction surgery. So it, women will come in with vaginal looseness, but they'll also have aesthetic concerns with how they look. Um, so it's not just that they've noticed a decreased sensation, but that they also don't like the way that they looked either due to um, uh, an open vagina or just t- tissue that, that's been there for, for a long time that, 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 that they've never liked. Now, the women that come into you uh, with, with these types of concerns, is this something that they will say that has bothered them since their teens or spending I mean, a long for, time? Yes. So for, for the women who come in for a labia reduction, they've been bothered with it since they were 13 or 14. Is that uh, right? A lot Interesting. of them. And then I'll see some women who, who maybe noticed it once, um, once they were pregnant or after having children. Um, so there's something about puberty um, and pregnancy that, that there must be some common link to that, whether maybe some hormonal changes that obviously occur. And then there must be some um, either darkening or lengthening that occurs at that time. Okay. As, as the OB, I, I was seeing a lot of damage that was happening to, to, to the pelvic floor, which piqued my interest in, in helping women with the problems that occur after vaginal deliveries. Um, okay. And those very commonly would be incontinence, um, vaginal prolapse, uterine prolapse. And so with that interest, I, I then decided to do a fellowship in, in urogynecology and uh, female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. Um, and it's, so that's, that's the, the, the basis of, of my practice and the, the patients that I see. And so for years, I was treating women with incontinence and, and these issues, yeah. um, solely concentrating on that. And all of these women, not all of them, but those women of every age range would have something aesthetic that they, they were bothered So they would about. tell you, they'd confide in you, oh. what could be done for this, what could be done for that? Sure. If, if I was a, seeing a patient for incontinence, All um, right. the most probably common question that they would ask me, and they, were, they would say it as a joke, say, well, while you're there lifting my bladder, can you do something about my extra, my, my extra fat in my tummy? Okay. And so my, my, my standard answer would be, well, I can't do it, but I can refer you on to a plastic surgeon friend that I have. Um, and so the, the, that opened up the, the, not the idea, but the, um, my, my interest in, in cosmetics. It yeah, because you also do liposuction for these women. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Right. But, but then the, as far as the cosmetic vaginal procedures that I do, um, even early on in my training, I always thought, well, I, I feel like I'm a plastic surgeon, but for the vagina. 
and I don't get recognized. And the women it. will ask you these questions. I mean, are they extremely uncomfortable to ask you these questions? Well, um, you know, some are, some are, okay. but it, it, I think maybe the, when I sit down with them and talk to them and I ask very personal questions about their bladder and their bowel habits, it's, it, to, to, it, it's, only, it's only natural and actually the, the correct thing to do is to continue to ask the next question, which is how, does, how do these vaginal conditions affect you sexually? Okay. Um, so, you know, so if it affects them negatively, if, um, so, the, so the next obvious question when you're asking, when, when, when patients come in complaining of incontinence and prolapse and some bowel problems, um, to me, the natural question is to ask how this has affected their sexual life. So they ask you during, you know, they're coming in for incontinence, but then they confide in you that they have other problems that affects yes. their sex life. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, because uh, it involves more, more than just bladder and bowel control. They may have um, vaginal and, and functional issues. So they, they, they will come in complaining of looseness um, that they, they've noticed since, since their vaginal deliveries. Um, but, but they also, a very common question when I'm doing an exam, they'll, they'll say, does everything look right down there? Because they, they don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like um, something's going on down there that they can't quite pinpoint. And okay. so kind of m m my job is to help them understand what is happening um, or what has happened and, and, um, and help them understand you know, what changes have taken place and, and what options they have. So let's begin with your training. I, I, you know, anticipating this interview, did some research. I guess there's a couple of places in the world where you learned this type of uh, procedure, cosmetic uh, gynecology, I'm calling it. Sure. And you've, you've gone to both. Yeah. And so the, the, the most famous place and the most fa famous surgeon was a Dr. David Matlock, where okay. I went to get trained in uh, the end of 06. Um, and, Is that and, right? And, and the reason for that was I, I decided, well, I... I at the request of my patients, saying that you know I don't, I, I want you to do something about my uh, my abnormal labia, or I want you to reduce my labia. So I thought, well, that looks easy enough, and and I did do that um, on a couple. Of you patients. said that you thought it was going to be very easy with your fellowship training, right? But it, it turned out to be a lot trickier than you thought, right? Elaborate on that. So I I had two very unhappy patients with with the results that they had from their labia reductions, and it was then that I decided I should get additional training. Um, and so I, I found uh, Dr. Matlock. Um, he was and remains the, the, the leader in training other physicians in how to do laser vaginal rejuvenation and labiaplasty. Okay. Um, and, and, and that was, that was very, um, very eye-opening. Um, um, so what I, what I learned there is, is how to consistently have excellent results. Okay. Um, and so, but, but, but then afterwards, I decided I, I, I applied those, the, those teachings to, to, to my practice but I wanted to take it to the next level. I, I wanted to bring those patients into the office and not just do it in the OR under general anesthesia. Okay. Um, and then, so there I, I went in and had additional training uh, with, with Dr. Alan Saad in, also in California. And then I, through his techniques, I'm able to do my procedures um, in the office. And, and I think it's, it, it's, it's a blend of both, which, which of course I, I think is, is a better result. Um, so, so the patients are are awake, um, they're, they're, they're comfortable through the procedure, it's essentially a painless procedure. I mean, are you that much better now than you were, or, or improve, are there that many improvements as far as results than you were in 06? Sure. I, I think my results are better now because of the, the, the combination of, of trainings that I had with okay. Drs. Alan Sod and, and Matlock. But in addition is, is the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm a fellowship trained urogynecologist, I'm able to um, coordinate reconstructive procedures with the cosmetic procedures. So I, I'm doing a lot of, of complex technical work, and in, and in the end, I'm, my, my results are getting much better. So these labiaplasties, though, as you say, I mean, it's more than just the labia. Yeah. So oftentimes, it, and a patient comes in thinking she just needs a labiaplasty, we'll add about three or four other procedures. There could be um, other, other areas of, of their vaginal and vulvar area that they don't like. Okay. Um, so... I oftentimes see women come in having had a labiaplasty elsewhere, and they, for example, did not reduce the clitoral hood, or they didn't address uh, some perineal problems, um, or ex extra skin tags that they may have. So in, in the end, we're, what, what patients really want is just to look a lot more youthful, they want to look cleaner, um, and, and, um, and, and they come back just being very, very confident. So the themselves. after, I mean, this really affects their self-esteem. Yeah. Oh, tremendously. Huge. Yeah. It's been, it's been the most rewarding, one of the most rewarding things I've done. 
So, you know, for, for 10 years helping women with urinary incontinence, you'd think that when they come back at their six-week visit, they'd be ecstatic, but they're happy. Um, when women come back after a labiaplasty, they're beaming. They're smiling from eye to eye. They're, they're, they're hugging the staff. They're hugging me. They, they can't wait to So women move on. don't feel alone. Are there women that are so self-conscious they don't get intimate? Oh, absolutely. When, yeah, is so, that right? So there'll be um, women who, who I've, I've done labiaplasties in women who have never had sex, who are virginal, who are in, they may be in their 20s. They, really, just because of the way... They they, they, they they don't they, they don't feel comfortable with themselves, um, and they may be very confident professional women, um, who may be very beautiful, um, but they it, it it it's almost like the the top doesn't match the bottom. They really there is really something there that isn't very attractive. I I, I want to go to something you told me on the telephone, and that was that that there was a sixty year old woman, if you don't mind me, uh, you know, bringing this up, that one of your staff that no longer works with you said, why would this woman who's sixty uh, and, uh, you know, in her words, unattractive or something like that, why would she want to do this? Sure. And, well, you, and, and you corrected her. Yeah. Well, the, the, I think the misconception is that um, that women having these procedures are, are, let's say, are just very young, attractive, model caliber women. But but they're all over the, they're all across the board. They could be um, teens to moms to grandmas. Um, and the, the important point here is that to them, this procedure means the world to them because to them in their eyes, when, when they're intimate or with their spouse or they're having sex, they are a 10, if you will, in their own eyes. And so that's what they want to feel. And okay. if, if, okay. they, if they feel that way sexually and they think they don't look that way, then I think they have, they certainly have every, every right and, and, and they're very, um, they're, they're very uh, motivated to, to improve what do you that, say that, that a gynecologist that may have told me, Randy, at 60, 65, I don't think it's the best idea to go through the procedure? Yeah. Well, I, I think they just don't get it. That They just don't understand what impact this condition is having on that patient. Okay. Uh, and, okay. And, and unfortunately... Does that go on with your own friends? Like when you go to these meetings, uh, oh, you're, you're a gynecologist, uh, pelvic surgeon, they find out you're doing vaginal beautification, they're going, oh my goodness. Sure. Oscar, why are you doing yeah. this? So, so some some really don't get it, and and, and the part of the problem is it's either what either, don't they get though? What don't they get? Um, or appreciate? I, th I think that the the problem is that they're imp they're imposing their own values and their and their own prejudices on their patients. Um, Interesting. And, and the, okay. I think the Good reality point. is if the patient comes in with a with a legitimate concern that affects them emotionally, or even if it and the fact that it's it's a sexual concern, it makes it more powerful to them. I'm, and not understanding that, I think, makes them insensitive. Um, you know, I, I see myself as, 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 as a woman's doctor and her advocate. And so if she comes in saying, I'm leaking urine, I want to be able to fix that. If she comes in saying, I don't like this part about me because I, I can't be intimate comfortably, um, then I want to be able to fix that and also. And women, but, and do you have a bias? I mean, you're a urogynecologist. People always ask me, on our website, wellnessair.com, they always ask for referrals. And we don't give referrals, by the way, but I'll say, go to an expert. Go to somebody that this is their specialty. Do you believe that if you're going to get this procedure done, vaginal rejuvenation, that you should see a urogynecologist? Uh, well... I mean, do you think you have an edge there? Uh, absolutely. I, I think I, one of the... Y yes, I do. Because, okay. Okay. you know, a, as... I think I have the, 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 the background to identify conditions that women come in for. The biggest thing I've learned in, in, in ever since I started um, performing vaginal rejuvenation is that women come in with a complaint. The, the complaint for vaginal tightening might be that I feel looseness or I don't feel much. Okay. But when I examine them, I often see women come in with that same complaint and there isn't looseness there. There's actually, there's other medical problems that that I, I tell them, you know, the last thing you need is a vaginal tightening procedure because it will only hurt you. Um, and so I refer them on to physical therapy or I refer them on to other, 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 other treatments um, okay. to, to take care of the problem. So I guess... Is this an underserved specialty in medicine, by the way? I mean, are there thousands and thousands of women? I mean, when gynecologists get together, I mean, is this a big complaint that women have when they come in? Yes. I mean, okay. Th th this, it's, it's a very common complaint that, but unfortunately, for decades, um, gynecologists are trained to tell women that whether it's the appearance complaint or whether, if it's looseness, that it's, it's a natural and, and not to worry about. So that's your training as a gynecologist? That, that, that is a training. And that, so say, hey, don't worry about it. It's okay. Sure. And it's actually the, 
the, the, the opinion of the American College of OBGYN, their suggestion is that the OBGYN, leave it alone. the OBGYN should tell their patients that they should maybe get some counseling. Um, that they is should, that right? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And so to, to so me... So you it, disagree with that? <clears throat> completely. Because like, now technology with lasers can do... But, but, but sure. isn't it true they lose sensation, though? Isn't that the problem? Well, absolutely. With the procedure? Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely really? not. So the 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 American College of OBGYN's concern is that maybe women should be seeking counseling for the, for these problems, or that they're having procedures that aren't tested or aren't verified to be um, to, to, to be beneficial uh, okay. for them. But um, but simply telling them to to not worry about it is is not the answer. Um, I, I feel that. It's like if a woman comes in for a breast augmentation because she doesn't like small breasts and she wants them bigger, who am I to say that you can't do that? Um, if they come in saying they want to look prettier or they, or they want to feel more during sex, um, they, I, I feel as their urogynecologist, it's my job to, to kind of figure well, out for them. Yeah, because many times I've found women who come in with looseness and the last thing they need is surgery. They, they have a, a medical condition that they need some physical therapy for. Okay. And, and had had that woman gone to the wrong someone, who's, who's someone who's not as trained as I am, he or she may have operated on her and really because there a are big plastic problem. surgeons go, that are doing this. Sure, on their laundry list of th things. Yeah, and, then, uh, and I know one of them. He goes, yeah, you know, I do it. I said, how many have you done? He says, three or four. Yeah, and so there there are plastic surgeons uh, even in my community, just all over the country, who who are doing labia reductions. Um, but, but that's where they stop, you know, hopefully. Um, because I, there are plastic surgeons in my community okay. who refer patients to me because once they see the patient, they realize, no, 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 you need, you need something extra. You, you need something more. So there, there are plastic surgeons who do these procedures, um, and, but most of them are simply doing labia reductions. Okay. Um, and so what, what I offer is, is completely different, meaning that um, these patients also may need clitoral hood reduction, they may need uh, labia majora reduction, not just uh, labia minora reduction. Um, they may need um, laser perineoplasties. Um, just so for the What does that mean, by the way, what you just well, said? Well, so in, in women who come in with looseness, often well, what they complain about is that their vagina is very gaping and open, and, okay. and it looks very unattractive. And so that is, for example, well, that can be fixed. That, that, that's something that I can fix. That um, you do. Interesting. But the plastic surgeons really should not be doing that. OK. Um, if they, if they don't have the training. Okay. If they don't have the training. So, I mean, this is such a private issue. I guess women, you know, women, uh, this is something I'm sure they don't talk about with the, even each other, right? I mean, your best friend, you don't right. even talk about this. Right. It's in the closet. So there's nobody to talk to about this. Right. And so um, they'll, you know, it, 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 that's also across the board. I mean, I have women who come in and they, they share these things with their girlfriends and they talk about it. Um, others come in very, very secretly and they don't want anyone to know okay. about it. Um, I have... I have parents who bring in their young daughters uh, because they've complained about the, their appearance and it's affecting them with sports. Because so something we haven't talked about is how it affects them, not just, just the appearance, but physically. Like, tell so, me about that. So, um, young women with very long or thick and dark labia, what, 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 how it bothers them is, is, is wearing um, tight-fitting clothing for exercise or riding a bicycle um, or even running. Um, and so they, they are very limited in what they're able to do. Okay. Um, now, we're just about out of time. But I, but, but I think the big question probably, if anybody's watched it this far, by the way, we're talking about vaginal rejuvenation, cosmetic gynecology with board-certified gynecologist, pelvic surgeon, Dr. Aguirre. Um, and you've been through a lot of training with this. This is, I mean, you've been doing, I mean, you're a pioneer really in this field. I mean, you've been doing it since 06. But the downtime uh, and, and pain. What can you tell women that are watching this about that? What can they expect? Yeah. What do your patients say? So for the, the, the beautiful thing is for the labiaplasties, there's very little downtime and, and very little discomfort. Um, so um, if someone is simply having the labiaplasty, even the hood reduction, the, the, they're, they're uncomfortable for about a, for about a week. Um, they're downtime. But they go to work and things like that? They can they... go to work. They, okay. what, what I ask them to do is, is not to exercise, and, and they can't be intimate for six weeks. Okay. Now, the vaginal rejuvenation, um, which is the vaginal tightening, that those women are more uncomfortable. So they'll actually be in, in, in mild to moderate pain for one to two weeks. Okay. Um, and so they're going to want to take some time off. So, but then the other, the, 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 to answer the other half of your question is, that does it affect them physically or, or, or does it cause um, loss of sensation down the road? Yeah. Um, 
if anything, it, it enhances their, their, their sexual pleasure because one, if, it's, if they're doing it to improve their appearance, they're improving their self-esteem and they're, they're a, lot more, um, a lot more comfortable. And, okay. And a lot more, they're having sex is more comfortable. They're able to enjoy it more because oh, they feel better about themselves. Yeah. And then the vaginal tightening, they're doing it because they're not feeling much with sex. And so they, they're going from not feeling anything with sex to feeling like they did before they had children, which, which, is, which is our goal. You know, there's all these changes that, that, that may occur during a vaginal delivery or having several vaginal deliveries. They, they, they want to be back like how they felt um, before children. But with the aesthetic uh, part of this, so they could go on a Friday, go back to work on Monday, or, or they could go on a Monday, sure. go back to work the next day. I mean, do you have patients that go back to work oh, sure. the next day even though... I've had, for example, a, a patient from Aspen who I saw and I did her surgery on a Friday. And unfortunately, she was skiing with her daughters the next week. Um, I asked her to, 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 to keep, not to do that, but not she to did do it that, anyway. but she did anyway because that's how good she feels. Okay. Um, the the you know the other thing we, we haven't talked about is also how it changes women's lives is is women come in because they have pain with sex, so it's it's the opposite. So we talked about the the large labia and how they don't like the appearance and may bother them with exercise, but large labia can also cause pain with sex, um, and so. Um, there are procedures that we do to to reduce the labia, but also make sex less painful. Um, and what that's done is, um, it's even I'm even seeing women into their 60s and 70s who have gone through menopause and they're having painful sex because of large labia concerns and also the other changes that occur with menopause. So it really, it's what, what's what's fascinating is is these women that I'm seeing have, have are all the way as young as 14 who have been brought in by by their parent for a labia reduction. Okay to 72. Um, and so it is across the board. What is the number one frequently asked question you get when they go in to see you about this, by the way? About either one of the procedures. Um, so th the most frequent question for labiaplasty? Yeah, I mean, what do they ask? What's the first thing they ask? They're, they're concerned if it's gonna hurt. Okay. Um, and, and that's an easy answer because it, it really doesn't. Um, they're, they're very comfortable doing that procedure and the okay. recovery is easy. Um, for what they should ask, what I want them to ask is whether that's the procedure they should have or not. Whether okay. they should have the, 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 I want them to understand why they're having the symptoms that they're having. Um, so the, as far as the vaginal tightening, I think that the most common question would be, um, that, will they have pain afterwards with sex? Um, and, and my goal is to, it's like I'm walking a fine line. I want them tight enough for sex to be enjoyable like they like it was before kids but not so tight that they can't have sex. Now does insurance cover this? I mean if there's urinary incontinence involved is well, it yeah, for the tightening in, procedure? In insurance covers insurance does cover um, medical issues that, that are going on uh, okay. with the vagina so if there's prolapse or incontinence insurance does cover that. And prolapse, defi what's defined prolapse? So the, the prolapse being if, if the vagina is falling or if the uterus is falling. So and how would a woman know that by the way? What are the symptoms? They would there? feel pressure, they would feel a bulge okay. Um, okay. and so it, or they would, um, it, it would cause a lot of discomfort. And so um, the nice thing is uh, many women I see have both things, both problems happening. So they may have a prolapse or an incontinence and we can, we can fix that with insurance. Is it normal at 50, 60 to sneeze and have a little bit? No. 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 And that can it, be fixed. It, yeah, it's not normal. It's very common. It's common as, as women age having had children. Um, so a very common patient is someone who comes in with incontinence in her 50s. Um, we, we can fix the incontinence and insurance pays for that. But then they, at the same time, they also want to have some cosmetic procedures. Okay. Okay. And, and, and also, I think, uh, you know, as a recap here, that we're talking about cosmetic uh, gynecology. And, the, and, the, and there's two types of schools of thought there. One is a, a procedure where the woman has anesthesia. She's completely out, done in an operating room. And then one is done while they're uh, as an outpatient they're, they're, or in your office. Yeah. They're, they're done in my office. And that's the way you do it. That's the way I do it. But you used to do the other way. Um, I used to do it. So if, if it's simple labia reduction, or, right, for, so for a labia reduction, um, I can do that in the office under local anesthesia. But if they require a, a more ag aggressive repairs, so for example, okay. if there's prolapse or if we're dealing with issues with their uterus and their, and their incontinence, then... Um, You're doing and, an OR. And at the same time, we're doing something cosmetic. I'd probably take them to the OR as well. We're out of time. Okay, final message though. Somebody watching this, they have some of the concerns that you've talked about. What's their first move? And what's the consultation like? Well, yeah, so with the, I have a, an office where they come in and they can feel in a very private um, office where they'll, they'll come in and they, 
Um, they do a, a private one-on-one -on -one consultation with, with myself. Okay. Um, they can bring in their, their spouse or their, their friends if they want, whatever that makes them comfortable. Um, but it's really, it's, so the, the experience in the office is, 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 is really taking a detailed history of what, of what the problem is, doing a detailed exam, and then sitting down with them and, and explaining what the solution could, would be for them. Okay. Um, they, um, you know, we have an environment where they're very comfortable. Um, I think they, they, they're very comfortable with me talking about these issues. Um, and then the, the, the recovery is one where we're very, we follow them up very closely um, and make sure that they're, that they're having an, a, a normal recovery without any problems. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Very interesting right, thank topic. You. And, thank you uh, very much. And we'll have this uh, interview on our website, and, and we'll give you access on, on, to have on your website. But, but thanks for coming in, and we're going to have to have you back to talk about some of the other procedures you do uh, in, in your office, from liposuction to the, uh, the, the regular urogynecology Great. stuff. Thank so thanks you. again. Thank you You've very watched much. You've been watching The Wellness Center, leader in medical news information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com. Just put in Dr. Aguirre or Cosmetic Gynecology. For now... I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.